Welcome back to Baldy Cats. Now, it's 2019. So how did the world get to this? People really struggle to understand. So we come towards the door. We open the door. And we bring it inwards. As we bring the door inwards, we see we pulled the door. Okay? So this is Del from the YouTube channel Beyond the Imaginary Brain and would you believe me if I told you he's right now in the process of debunking gravity by teaching us how to open a door. I mean just when you thought you'd heard it all. So let's have a little bit of a listen to his logic shall we? Gravity is said to be a pulling force. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off showing some simplistic aspects of where people misunderstand and get confused about the mechanics of motion. That's right, Dell has actually decided that because people refer to gravity as a pulling force, if he can show us that we're using the word pull incorrectly, then gravity cannot exist. It is absolutely incredible. Now, what other situations do we use the term pull? Well, for example, if I want to pull open a drawer. You open a drawer and you pull. Thanks, Dell. Now, according to Dell's logic, because we use the term pull when we're opening a drawer, the ability to open a drawer must therefore not exist. Now, Dell has plenty of examples of where we use the word pull in everyday life, and he's going to use all of those to show us that gravity can't be possible. Um, starting with the door. So as you can see, we have to apply a pressure downwards on the handle. We then put our hand here on the back side of the handle and apply a pressure in order to bring the door inwards. And he can even explain how to close the door. Same again, when we are shutting the door, we have to push down on the handle. But you know what? It's not just people's front doors that he can open either. And the same again here. We would say I pulled the drawer. I pushed the drawer. Pull the draw, push the draw. Go on then, one more time. You open a drawer and you pull. But of course, as we've learnt so far, we don't pull open a drawer because pull doesn't exist, which means gravity doesn't exist. It's all very complicated. Anyway, Dell continues to educate us. Physicality again is the exact same. I have to place my hand over the handle, now applying the force that has been exerted on the inner portion and the drawer opens. Now I'm applying the pressure again to close the drawer. And we can carry on applying this type of logic to all sorts of stuff like motorcycle handbrakes. So again as you can see hand is over, the pressure is now applied here, pushing. And even when you tow a car you're not pulling it, you're pushing it. Now if we look at the situation here as the car is, is, is accelerated forward this is now catching on the back end of the car. The pressure is now being applied here, here, and here internally. And Dell also shows us that once you've mastered the technique of opening a drawer with your hands, you can push it open with a rope. Push. In fact, you can debunk gravity with almost any household object. Again, something simple as lifting a cup where people may struggle to understand. Or even when doing exercise. What we get here is what people would call a pull-up. But you just guessed correctly, there's absolutely no pulling involved. Gravity debunked. Now, when I started watching this stream, I was hoping we were going to learn something a little bit more technical. As I say, I'm not going to bother, you know, um, showing the whole principles of the internal combustion engine. Yeah, but in hindsight, it is probably best that... Maybe he didn't try to explain that. Anyway, just to show you how strongly Dell feels about the word pull and his belief that scientists need to use the word pull to justify some sort of invention of gravity, here he is on the subject one more time. They require it to be the central hub of their whole shebang. They need this central aspect of a non-geometric non-entity that can pull stuff towards it, which is why they've got these visual representations of the warping and bending of space-time but they only can only show on a, a, a planar uh, aspect, two-dimensional. So, you know, they don't show it in three dimensions because it's nonsense. 
Now, it isn't just high IQ practical demonstrations like this that Dell's been doing in his research. He's also been contacting other YouTubes like myself to ask us why we dare use the word pull when we start talking about gravity. Here's what I said. Well, in a nutshell, I said, I don't care. It's all semantics. It doesn't matter whether we use the term pull or push. All we're doing is describing the relative directions the objects are moving in. We're not claiming to be describing the mechanics of what's going on. And that applies equally well to his favourite new force, which is push or applied pressure, as he likes to call it. Now, Dell didn't like my answer to that, so he called me a liar and continued to ask me, how does gravity work and how does gravity pull things and what is the mechanics of that pull? Now, I kept saying, I don't know how gravity works. I don't know if anybody knows the exact specific mechanics of how gravity works, but we can't deny the fact that it exists and we understand its behaviour and we can use it to make predictions and accurate models, etc, etc. But Dell wasn't happy with that. So he asked me again. And again. And again. I said it didn't matter. So he asked me again. And again. I asked him if he was drunk. And he asked me again. And again. And again with the same question. And again. And then again. And then he asked me again. And again. And again again. And then, yeah, he asked me again. And again. And then he asked me again again. And then again again. And then he asked me again. So after failing to get me to claim that I actually know the true mechanics of gravity, and after failing to get me to accept that because we use the word pull, we should discard gravity, um, Dell got a little bit upset. And took his ball home. Ew, you, you're just a liar. Now I know by now a lot of you will be thinking about magnetism and other non-contact forces which clearly uh, attract two objects together but we're not going to talk about those for now. What we're going to do is take one of Dell's examples, this one, Push the drawer. And we're going to be showing Dell that even something as simple as pushing a drawer shut with your hand isn't necessarily the result of a push force. Uh, I know that sounds a little bit odd, but to get to my point, let's have a little refresher on how muscles work with this one minute reminder. So muscle fibres are divided into these contractible little subunits that we call a sarcomere. Inside each sarcomere we have these thick meiosin filaments represented by the red filament at the bottom and thin actin filaments which are represented by the yellow one above. Now that weird thing in the middle we're going to call the meiosin head group and the meiosin head group wants to bond or bind or stick to that actin filament above but it can't because of that green coil like substance we're going to call tropomyosin which blocks the binding site. But when calcium ions enter the sarcomere they bond with these little blue things which are called troponin. This causes the troponin to change shape, move the tropomyosin out the way and now the meiosin head group can stick to the actin filament. Now it's worth noting that this can only happen if the myosin head group was previously bound with ATP or adenosine triphosphate and then hydrolyze this or split it into ADP, adenosine diphosphate and an inorganic phosphate. And that's important because it's the release of this ADP that allows a myosin head group to change shape and pull the actin filament along with it, therefore contracting the sarcomere. So ultimately, muscle contraction, which causes that push force, is the result of chemical interactions. What is happening to the molecules, the rearrangement of those molecules, to cause that myosin head group to change its position? What forces are happening at that, that low level between the electrons and the protons in those atoms to cause that movement? Can we call it a push? Can we call it a pull? How does that electrostatic force actually work? Well, I don't know, and I'm pretty sure this guy doesn't know either. You open a drawer and you pull. And even if we got right down to the very, very bottom of it and found out that as these molecules are somehow rearranging themselves due to electrostatic forces, there is something pushing on them somehow. Or even if we got down to the bottom of it uh, with magnetism and found out that as magnets attract, they are somehow being pushed from the sides. That doesn't support this silly argument that gravity can't exist at all. We don't fully understand how gravity works. I don't understand how gravity works, but we can use it to make accurate predictions, we understand its behaviour extremely well, and if it turns out that there is some sort of push force that's pushing things to the floor, it doesn't mean gravity doesn't exist, it just means we've gone one step deeper to learn how it works. Um, but anyway, some people in the chat of Dell's original video, which I've linked in the description, they don't want to go that one step further, they're just happy watching somebody open and close a door. Check this out. Now, as you might expect, Conspiracy Cats is going to be going to town a little bit on this whole idea um, in the next week or two at least. But I just wanted to get this out now and get it out of my system. But for now, this video is over. Bye. And the same again here. We would 
see I pulled the draw, I pushed the draw, pulled the draw, pushed the draw.